is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logo that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with another video. We're going to talk about the Portland Trailblazers, Kenny, Shaq, and Ernie. And Charles Barkley was talking about this last night. I said, you know, it's interesting because I like the Portland Trail Blazers. They have they overachieved last year and took advantage of teams like the Wolves and Spurs having major injuries to their best players. And they was able to sneak into that top seed, even though it didn't really pay off because they lost home court advantage right away. And the Pelican series, they still shown that they can be a, a, a great team. And I feel like look the pickups to Rodney Hood basically for nothing. He has shown that he, he can be a good weapon for them. And he needed a start where he can actually, you know, get the minutes and have a, a big impact on the game. And we've been seeing that um, Rodney Hood has had some big games for the, the Pelic, I mean, for the, the, the Trailblazers. And they needed some extra help, especially on that wing position. Because honestly, you know, that small four position has been one of their biggest weaknesses so far. And it has always been. And for him to come in in 12 games and give them 43 from the field and 35 from three while also shooting 80% from the free throw line, um, it shows you that he can be a difference maker and even a guy that can probably help them win a game when it comes to the playoffs because he's averaging 11 points a game in March um, since he's been traded. But... They, they don't utilize him as much, but right now he's getting more minutes and he's becoming more of a um, big option because of his ability to play on and off the ball. But not only that, he can create his own shot, whether it's off the dribble with a pull-up or even just hitting wide-open shots off kickouts from Dame and CJ because they like to probe and they like to um, play in the pick-and-roll a lot. Rodney Hood is a good fit for what they're trying to do. I just wish he was just a little bit more aggressive. Um because Rodney Hood is a guy that can really get it going that can give you double digits every game if you give him the opportunities. And they need somebody that can create a shot outside of Dame and CJ on the perimeter because you don't really get that from Harkless and you don't really get that from Aminu. Because I love me some Alfredo Camino. He has improved significantly, but he's still just a one-dimensional player offensively. And, you know, at first he wasn't even that. But so you got to give him credit for him to the for, for him developing. But at the same time, that that was a great pickup for them getting Rodney Hood. It gave them something that they needed at that position. And then you look at the other acquisition in his cancer. He hasn't played the best defense. He hasn't been the best player. But for him to give you 50 percent from the field coming off the bench, only giving you 19 to 20 minutes a game. But he's also giving you 6.7 rebounds and 10 points a game. That's something that they didn't have on their bench at all, which was two scoring punches and two people that can really make an impact on a game in minor minutes and give them shot making. Because you all know that Ennis Cantor can hit an elbow jumper. Ennis Cantor can post up and pass out of the post. He can play in the pick and roll because he likes to dive to the rim. He likes to pull up for the jumper. And he's a good free throw shooter. So even if he gets to the paint, he can still knock down free throws at a good enough clip to where he's a threat. And it gives you some mobility. Nurkic is not the most mobile guy. Um, and his canter give you some some speed at that position because he can play the four or the five. And they can even go big, which we have seen them do. And something they really couldn't do because they didn't have modern day bigs like they have now. Even though Nurkic is still more of a traditional big. And his canter is a modern day big being able to put it on the floor and play in the pick and roll and have soft touch and post up and on switches and obviously knock down jumpers. Obviously, he was working on his three-point shot, but coaches have took him away from that direction, and they just fine with him being a paint guy, which has helped because he does most of his damage when he gets rebounds and offensive rebounds. So why not keep him in the area that he succeeds at the most? And that's what you see a lot of coaches doing. But I just feel like this team goes back to Dame and CJ. 
Is Dame and CJ good enough for you to get to the Western Conference Finals? And that's what made me make this video because when I hear Charles Barkley and obviously um, Kenny the Jet Smith say that, it do make me think like, can CJ and Dame, can they carry you to the Western Conference Finals? And the reason why I say that is right now they will have to play Denver in the second round. Do I trust CJ and Dame to win that series? I think they can compete. I, I don't feel like Denver will be the overwhelming favorite because they play a similar style. They got multiple guys that can handle the ball and shoot off the ball. But they also got an inside guy like Jokic that can dominate in the inside but also take it out to the outside. But he, he can facilitate and run the offense. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing depending on where they're stationed at after – the season is over. Would they be a third seed? Then I can see them getting far, farther. Would they be the fourth or the fifth seed? That's going to be the trouble because they will have to play the Rockets. They will have to play the Thunder because that's the people that they're fighting for that third, fourth, or fifth spot. Can they beat the Rockets? Can they beat the Thunder? That's my whole point that I don't know if I could jump on the bandwagon saying Portland can go all the way to the NBA Finals or especially the Western Conference Finals because if you're playing the Rockets or OKC, I don't know if I'll pick you in that series because those teams match up good against you. They both got guys that can play multiple positions. And they have superstar players that can carry them. But the thing is that they, they play defense. And we heard Shaq say that the other guys play defense. The Golden State Warriors play defense. You have Paul George and Ferguson and Russell. And then you have the bigs like Steven Adams. And then you have the versatility with Grant and stuff like that. That's a good matchup for OKC. Because they can defend and switch and guard all their guys, just like we've seen with the Pelicans. I told you guys going into that series, the Pelicans was going to win that series, even though they had a breakout season and everybody was anticipating Portland to have a breakout year in the playoffs. I picked the Pelicans to win that series because of Drew Holiday and Rondo. They can guard and match up well against CJ and Dame. And Dame and CJ could never really have one of those breakout games that they were like, oh, my God, this is why they're going to win. They could never really get it going. They could never really dominate consistently. And we seem to happen with a lot of point guards in the NBA. They needed a wing or they needed a big guy. Nurkic is just not a dominant big guy when it comes to offense. And they don't have a good wing player. While they have Paul George, they have, obviously, James Harden and Chris Paul. James Harden and Chris Paul, they can outscore and compete with Dame and CJ. Remember, this Rockets team went to the Western Conference Finals last year, and they won 65 games with that backcourt. And then you had to put it in perspective. They, he even went to the Western Conference Finals with Dwight Howard, and they lost to the Golden State Warriors. So he already been deep in the playoffs, and he has already carried the team twice to the Western Conference Finals. That's something that Dame and CJ have never done as a tandem was get that far in the playoffs. And they usually lose to Golden State, the team that Shaq brought up. The team that usually put out CJ and them is Golden State. So the problem is if they're the fourth or the fifth seed, they will have to play golden state to get to the western conference finals and that's only if they beat houston or if they only beat okc in the first round so you gotta be one of those two teams then you have to beat golden state because they the number one seed then you get to the western conference finals and face whoever will be denver or whoever it will be that's a tough road for a team that's not they, they're a great offensive team i like their offense because you have guys that can really break down the defense and create their shot but they also smart enough that they can play to their advantage. CJ knows he wants to pull up. CJ knows he can shoot threes. So the dynamic of him and Dane being both ball handlers that can break down the defense, collapse the defense, but also keep the defense honest because they can pull up at the same time makes them a tough cover. But they also have always been defensive liabilities because they're basically both point guards playing the shooting guard and point guard position. Plus, they have never been great defenders, and it's because of their athleticism and their height has always gave more physical and bigger guards, especially in the Western Conference, advantages over them. Plus, they they don't really show out enough in the playoffs. They don't really say, okay, it's time for us to win this game. We got to do whatever we take. If I got to go for 40, if I got to go for 50, that's what I have to do. And remember, Damon though, had a great game yesterday, and they still lost to the Thunder. So... He went for 50, CJ got his numbers, and they still didn't do enough to win the game in overtime. And, you know, it got away from them. 
So I think the Portland Trailblazers is one of the funnest teams to watch. I think they're exciting. I think they're, they are a good team. I think they're clinging on, like I said, when they traded for, I mean, when they picked up Cantor, they're clinging on borderline championship contenders. They're respectable. They're great. They're tough to beat. They can beat anybody when they're clicking. But consistency has really hurt them. Can they role players consistently step up because they don't have another superstar? They don't have that third guy, and they're finding that guy. If you call Nurkic that guy, Nurkic is a good, solid player, but he's not a franchise player. He's not an all-star caliber player. Even though I do love Nurkic and I love to pick up, and it has helped their defense, and he has upgraded his game every season because now he's passing in the post. Now he's playing in the high post, in the mid post. He's hitting elbow jumper. He's more confident in his offensive abilities, which they needed, and he is young, so he can continue to develop. But they need that third star that can really help push them to that contender status. they a good team. They're a respectable team, but I don't think they're a great team, and that's why they continue to fall short of the Western Conference Finals because they just not great enough. And I don't think CJ is a, a superstar player. I think he's a great player to have on your team, especially with this type of team that they own right now. But CJ is not a superstar. He could be if you gave him more opportunities with a different team, depending on how it's built. But with these two guys, they both just take turns dribbling and, and, and facilitating the offense. They're not really superstar players i even question that for dame he has helped his teammate to play off for multiple years but they have never made a crazy push or they have never really made it to the finals they haven't even really came close to the finals and then like i said they got swept last year with a team that was basically a good matchup for both teams they were basically even but they got swept because they couldn't really score on drew holiday and rondo consistently and can dame take over is he gonna have that hunger mentality is he gonna go into the playoff trying to prove himself is he gonna go into the playoff trying to go at everybody's head he hasn't done that neither has cj and they really need if they want to beat the great teams in the western conference they got to have 30 plus points 30 plus point games if they want to beat the best in the west and they haven't had that to me really at all and that's what they're going to need to do without that third star without that third player or a player that's better than them and they become lower they're going to need more of them to do more which means they got to do more if they really want to make it deep yeah but we're gonna have to really see a dirk light final i mean dirk light playoff run if Dame really want to get to that Western Conference Finals or even the NBA Finals as the best player on the team, we're going to have to see him literally go at everybody, really go out there and, and leave his mark. We need one of those historic runs if the Portland Trailblazer wants to win a championship because a lot of teams just have more talent than they do. Plus, it's just a tough matchup from first to second to even third round because they might have to play Denver in the Western Conference Finals. So I think that we're going to really have to see them have the best performances of their career if they really honestly and truthfully want to make it that far. And you go into the playoffs feeling like you got a chance, you don't know what's going to happen. That's the fun part about it. You work so hard to get there. And, you know, they they match up. They can pay attention. They can really focus in on your weaknesses. And it just makes it so tough and hard to really have a dominant performance consistently. And that's what they're going to have to do if they really want to make it that far or even to the NBA Finals, even if it ain't this year. Dame getting older, CJ getting older, and they're almost 30. So they have to figure out how they're going to really turn this team into a legitimate contender in the West. I feel like they're pretenders. I feel like they can win games in the regular season, but they collapse in the playoffs because of the matchups, because they focus in on them and they just can't carry enough of the load to really beat great teams consistently and we have consistently seen them the last five years be good enough to make it but not really do anything in the playoffs because teams are better which means they have to play better or they're gonna have to finally try to go out there and get that other guy that they missing to take them over the top which they haven't done yet but the pickup of Nurkic helped them a whole lot and it made them a lot more formidable it gave them a different look it gave them a, 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 a inside presence offensively and defensively but he's still not where he needs to be if that's what they're going to really try to build their team around with Dame Nurk and, and CJ. That's not enough. And I told you guys last year, I mean, yeah, last year, a couple months ago, that they're going to either have to trade Dame or CJ or they're going to literally have to keep this team together long enough 
that the NBA come weaker and then they can make that move that puts them over the top. So it's possible. There's still a chance that they can win one with Dame and CJ, but things have to go their way. They, they're going to need a little bit of help, and once that player comes available and they can steal them for, for the right amount of pieces, um, maybe then they'll win one with, the, with this duo. But I don't see it happening unless that scenario happens, which could be years from now, and they might be completely different players by then. So I don't even know how the NBA will look, and I don't know how they will play, and I don't even know if Terry Stotts will be the coach because he hasn't. I met him, and I got pictures of him on my Facebook page, but he hasn't really got them over the top, which he's been good enough to help them make the playoffs, but not good enough to help them get to a championship or even close in that regard. So let me know what you guys think. Is the Portland Trailblazers contenders? Is I'm sleeping on them? Is I'm overrating them? Or is they just a borderline good team? They're not great. They're, they're a great team, but not a championship team. They're not a team that can win it all, but they're great. And if you feel like that, I think we'll agree on that. But I still feel like they're missing one more piece. And I still feel like at the end of the day, they're either going to have to wait for that scenario to happen where they have a chance to literally put them over them, put have a player that can put them over the top, or they're just going to have to trade CJ or Dame and try to find that guy by getting rid of one of them, which could help if they can find somebody better than those players. Kind of like what we've seen with Toronto. Let's trade DeMar DeRozan to get Kawhi Leonard because he's better. And it has looked good, but we still got to see how it looks in the playoffs. So, Quinn Wade, basketball analysis, I'm gone. Check out my website, analysisplayground.com. Link will be in the description and comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, analysisplayground.com. Link will be in the description and comment section below. Like on Facebook to show support. Thanks for everybody that like on Facebook. Um, I appreciate it. I really do. Check out my older videos on my channel. I got NBA breakdowns, discussions just like this. I do breakdowns of, uh, with NBA players' uh, tributes. I cover Summer League. I go there a lot. And obviously, I cover the NBA draft season previews. I do it all. I try to go 365 because I enjoy making these videos. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. That's why I continue to go. And let me know how you feel about the video. And let me know how you feel like the Blazers. Can they win one? Is it going to be in the future? Is they going to break this team up because they're not good enough? Or will they get that missing piece at the right time and help them win a the championship that season, which we've seen teams do before. That's why I think it's possible. But just not this year because the trade deadline is over. And so is the buyouts almost. So, um, I'm gone.